welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview. We're here at Gen Con in Indianapolis. I'm Callie, and this is Eric from Games by Bicycle. Hi, Eric. Hello. <laughs> How's it going here at Gen Con? I've only been here two hours. I'm super tired. <laughs> already, already. <laughs> well, so I heard you're the game designer of Tattoo Stories. Will you tell us a little bit about it? I would love to. So Tattoo Stories is a, whoa, a drawing party game. Um, and basically what's going to happen is one person is going to play the customer. They're going to come into the tattoo parlor and they really know what they like, but they don't know what they want. So it's everybody's job to combine all the tattoo elements into one cohesive design. So the I could see how that could get pretty hilarious pretty quickly. Yes, especially <laughs> if you can draw, then it's really cool because you draw this awesome piece. If you can't draw, it's really cool because it's hilarious. <laughs> and you're, you know, you have to, at the end of the drawing time, you have to pitch your tattoos. You have to share it and explain what everything is. Um, because at the end, each individual card is given to the person who used that the best. So it's, it's not based on your drawing talent. It's based on the creativity of your idea. So how you incorporate Santa and a snake together. Exactly. So this was a, uh, a Britney Spears uh, uh, style Santa snake. Uh, so this person won the, the Santa card. Got it. And what uh, inspired you to create this game? Uh, so I, I really love tattoos. I don't have any of my own because I suffer from buyer's remorse like anytime I spend any money. Um, but I love tattoos and like the culture. I have a lot of friends who are tattoo artists. Um, just art in general, like graffiti and, and all kinds of stuff is, is really uh, uh, important to me. Um, and also giving people a, a, an opportunity to be creative. Um, so uh, whether it's writing or drawing or you know sculpting in you know other kind of party games, I always like games where you get to make something. Um, and so this is a cool one because people can take pictures and remember the tattoo they drew. Awesome. I could see, yeah, that people going back, oh, remember that crazy tattoo, and then someone actually gets the tattoo. I don't know. <laughs> That's the dream. That's right. what I'm holding out for. Is All right. Somebody to tag a tattoo. And then how do you win, or is it not really about winning? So there are points. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but basically, everybody goes around twice as the customer, and whoever has the most cards at the end wins. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. But at parties, usually we end up playing like six times around, and then nobody's keeping score at the end. But yeah. So if people want to learn more about this game or purchase it, where should they go? So this comes out in October, uh, so you can head over to the Bicycle website. Um, there are uh, maybe some other retail things in the, in the works as well, but um, definitely through the Bicycle website. Awesome. Can't wait for October. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Eric. And um, this has been Unfiltered Gamer at Gen Con, and as always, we look forward to seeing you guys next time. Hello everyone and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie and I'm here with Brenna from Starling Games. Hi Brenna. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for showing us around the Starling Games booth. Oh, totally. How's the con going? It's been great. It's been really busy. Um, you know, we're lucky that we have a uh, warehouse here in Indiana, so we've been able to keep restocking each day because we've definitely needed it. So it's a good problem to have. <laughs> yes, yeah, a very good problem. Thanks for sharing. So what are you guys excited to share at Gen Con? Um, so here at the show, we have a bunch of new things. Uh, one thing that we're excited about is uh, the new expansion to Everdell, Pearlbrook, actually the first expansion. Um, so that uh, was kickstarted. Um, last fall and uh, it's been shipping out to Kickstarter backers and we're really happy to have it here at the show also. Awesome, I played Everdell, I love it, I can't Thank wait you. to see the expansion. Yeah, I mean we think it's super fun. Um, so the expansion adds, I don't know how much of you of it you, that you can see behind me. Um, we can go over there, yeah, yeah, we can get a little shot there. Yeah, so the expansion adds uh, a new river sideboard uh, that goes up against the main board. Um, you also get a new type of worker called the Frog Ambassador, which you can see there. Um, he's not used like a regular worker, he can only visit the river. But when he goes there, he's going to be flipping those river cards over and discovering uh, new citizens and new locations. And they're going to give you a lot of different benefits, um, but mainly uh, they're gonna be giving you pearls, which is the new resource in the game. Uh, this is the collector's edition of the expansion that we have out here, so the pearls are actually glass in this edition, which is really nice. Um, we also replaced, if you're familiar with the base game, um, the basic events that sit on the board. We've replaced those with uh, these, which are 3D wonders. Um, so these are um, different constructions that you can build for a lot of points. Like this one is the most valuable one at 25 Wow. <laughs> but they're really hard to achieve. Yes. <laughs> 
I bet. We also added um, those uh, mini cards down there, which are adornments. It's a new type of card in the game. Those are like personal goals that you have in your hand for end game scoring. Uh, a whole bunch of new meeples, of course, uh, that are all themed out for the river. And then uh, new critters and constructions that go in the main deck, uh, new forest cards, new special events, so just even more variety for setup. Awesome, so it, I like it. The expansion doesn't just add on new element, it adds more variety to the original game. Yeah, definitely, and um, you know, one thing we wanted to keep in mind was we really like uh, the running time of Everdell. We don't want it to get over long. Yeah. Um, so the complexity that Pearlbrook adds, it's not um, like cumulative, it's not just building on what's before, it makes you make more complex decisions in the existing framework of the game. Awesome. Uh, what else do you want to share with us today? Yeah, so um, right behind us here, um, we have Anomaly. Around here, yeah. Anomaly um, is a, a game for two to four players. It's a sci-fi horror game that uses um, hidden movement. It's also a one versus many game. Uh, so in this game, one player is playing as the Anomaly, which you know, could be an alien, could be a rogue AI, some kind of malevolent force. We don't really know what it is. The other players are students um, who are playing on the same team, and you're all trapped together on the space station, uh, and it's a fight for survival <laughs> till the end. Um, the interesting thing about this is that it is hidden movement, but it's hidden movement for everybody. Um, so even players on the same team, you don't actually know where they are. Oh, that <laughs> adds a different a yeah. different level of the hidden movement, one versus many kind of thing. Definitely. So it's super tense, really atmospheric, because you never know, like, if you enter a zone, what's going to be waiting for you on the other side. It could be one of your teammates. It could be the anomaly. Um, the other thing, and you can't tell them because you'll let the other the opponent know. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, the other thing that's cool is the students um, will get a hand of cards, and those cards have one ability on the top, one on the bottom. And um, when they play a card to use an ability, instead of just discarding that card, they actually have to give it to the anomaly, who then flips it over and gets a special ability. So everything you do as you're trying to progress through the game and hunt down the anomaly, you're actually making it stronger and giving it more options. So you have to be really strategic about what you choose to do and when, because you don't want to make it too strong. <laughs> well, I really like how the actual hidden movement element is a board that's hidden behind your player's face. That's kind of unique as well, rather than writing things out or something. Yeah, definitely. And there are um, tracking cards that the students will use um, that will help kind of narrow down where they could be, but it, it usually won't give you enough information to pinpoint exactly. Um, the way the board is laid out, like mathematically, it's, it could usually be like one of four zones that you could be in. So a little bit of information, but not really enough. <laughs> Awesome. So if people want to know about Everdell, the expansion, or Anomaly, where should they go to find out more? Yeah, so um, they can visit us online at starling.games, um, on Facebook at Play Starling Games, or Twitter just at Starling Games. Awesome. Is there anything else you want to share, share out? Yeah, um, we'll have a few new uh, things coming up. We actually uh, recently wrapped development on two new Everdell expansions. So we are super excited about that. Um, so look for those on Kickstarter probably in the fall. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Brenna. It's been awesome here at Starling's Game Booth at Gen Con. This is Callie from Unfiltered Gamer, and we'll see you guys next time. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer interview here at Gen Con. I'm Callie, and today I'm here with Allie Lloyd from Goliath Games. Hi, Allie. Hi, how are you doing? Good. <laughs> so I see you guys have a lot of games to share here at Gen Con. How's it going? It's been a great. We're at day two, still going strong. Um, we've got a lot of new adult party games, some Harry Potter stuff, and some sports tracking, as you can see behind us here. Um, so it's been a really great show so far. Awesome. So I see you have a friend here to show us about sports stacking. So what, who is he and what's, he all, what's it all about? This is Drew Dixon, our champion from Team USA. Um, and Drew, do you want to tell us a little bit about what that entails? Yeah. So you have 12 specially designed cups. They're called speed stacks. Uh, Goliath is actually going to be starting the mass production of these to be sold in stores such as Walmart and Target. Uh, this is a game where you race your friends. It's about speed and time, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to travel the country and the world competing for Team USA. That's really cool. Uh, maybe show us how it's done. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> They're crazy fast. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> How long have you been doing this? 
Uh, I've been competing for seven years. Wow. Okay, so what's the plan to mass produce these? So Speed Stocks is in more than 44,000 um, school curriculums all over the U.S. And so we're going to be bringing these cups to mass retail. So your Amazon, Target, Walmart, so that anybody can, you know, go buy some cups, train, and become a, a sports stacker. Awesome. And then what's with the table? What's unique about that? Um, so these are the tables that we've brought to the event, but I mean, Drew, I think you have more specifics about your tournament yeah. table. Yeah. So a tournament table is just, you know, a normal eight foot table that's 30 inches tall and is water plastic. Um, these are just tables that they made to sell um, just to make it easier for demonstrations and events like these because you've got your timer and everything on the table. Oh, awesome. It's got a timer there so you can get better and practice over time. Cool. Anything else you want to say? Um, so, you know, you can, we'll be selling the cups, the mats, little mini timers. Um, okay. Got there you some go. guys That's here. And the little handle so that your cups can stay together. Oh, so travel friendly. Yes. <laughs> awesome. So what do we have over here? Okay, this is Make Called Side Effects, our new charades-like game for ages 14 and up. And this has been really well received. We actually sold out of all the copies we brought yesterday, so we've ordered some more. Um, and this is, you know, it comes out early September, so these are our first to market copies. Um, so it's just been really great to see everybody's reaction. So it's the Gen Con sort of sneak peek and early release. Exactly yeah. that. Awesome. And this is uh, your coworkers. Hi. Hello, I'm Suzanne. Hi. Are you going to show us a little bit more about side effects and everything that you get? Yeah, absolutely. So over here, if you want to come a little bit closer, we have different side effects that we have. Uh, these are some examples, um, such as smooth flight. So you're supposed to speak like a flight attendant making an announcement, while simultaneously you can't stop applauding. So it's going to be a little bit tricky because it's like charades and taboo together, and you're trying to get your teammate to guess one of the words on this card right here. So I need to get my teammate to say the word lie while doing all these effects as well while talking like a flight attendant making an announcement here as we were about to board. So, so this is hidden from everyone. Yeah. 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 And so that was just an example one. We can do an actual round, a little demo thing as well. So yeah, it, it starts getting a little trippy and strange because you don't know if you're trying to guess the clapping or if you're trying to guess the talking or something like that, but yeah. Is this the actual like That's the box. box? Cool. That, that must look fun on your game uh, shelf. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we can show you around. Yeah. Okay. So next next game. All right. What's this game? All right. Um, so I think you guys are familiar with our game Shit Happens. Um, but it had lots of expansion packs, and we thought it was hysterical, and TBS also thought it was hysterical. And so they actually created a comedy game show that's going to be airing this October based off of Shit Happens. Oh, wow. That's really... Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we thought that was, you know, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. So we came up with a new game, similar to Shit Happens, but different. And this is called the Misery Index. Um, so in Shit Happens, you're trying to rank your lane of pain in different cards and get to 10. But in the Misery Index, once you've got eight cards, you move on to round two. And in round two, three cards are read to you, and you have to put them in order um, from least to greatest. And these are all new bad things that can happen to you? There's some new things, there's some old things, there's some really bad things that we've reformatted to not be as bad, okay. um, <laughs> and so forth. So, do you want me to read you three cards? You can try to put them in order? Yes, okay. <laughs> all right. You vomit in public, you have very sweaty palms, and you have a four-day power outage. Uh, which one is make me more miserable? Okay, sweaty palms is the least, I think. Uh, and then, then vomiting in public, and then the four-day power outage. I think that's pretty extreme. How did I do? Let's see. Sweaty palms, vomit in public, four-day power outage. Woo, got it. <laughs> you got it. So then you move on to round three. Okay. And this is the very last round. Uh-oh. <laughs> So this card says, pee stain on pants. So in order to guess, you have to guess within 10 points. So this is a 2.5. So you could have been like between one and 10 okay. or five okay, and 15. Okay, I'm not actually guessing. I'm like, you know, I know All what right. it is now. Okay. Here we go. Your favorite neighbor dies. I have to get within 10, within 10 points based yes. on, so this was, ooh. 
Okay, I'm gonna go around around 60. So like 60 to 70? Oh, uh, like, like 55 to 65. The game seems to think that oh. you'll mourn pretty quickly and get over it. <laughs> um, so then you would keep guessing until you get it right. Okay, okay. Some people are closer to their neighbors, I guess, than others. <laughs> Anything else you want? You want to share this one too, right? Yeah. yeah, let's go over here. This one looks fun. All right. So this is, uh, is this your first Harry Potter game? This is our no, second, second, Harry, second Potter. Harry Potter game. Awesome. What's it all about? This is Harry Potter Spellcasters for ages six and up. And you have been bestowed Harry Potter's magical wand. And it's up to you to draw different spells and get your teammates to guess them. Okay. So all the big cards correspond to little cards. Okay, so if you're the spellcaster, you take your tiny little card, and I'm going to draw the spell, and you have to find it. Okay, 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 I can do that. Okay, it looked like Reducto. You'd be correct. <laughs> Good work. Um, so then you get to keep that card, and then you'd become the spellcaster, and keep casting magical spells. I can see this. What what age range is this? Six and up. Yeah, so I can see this for younger kids who are really into Harry Potter, and it's good uh, sort of spatial reasoning. Yes, yes, <laughs> um, definitely good for young families, um, and all you know, Terry. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. Uh, is that? Are we going more, or is that yeah, it? Okay. A collectible figure that is pretty neat. He's on the other side. Um, so what's this all about? <laughs> these are our new, um, this is something brand new for us. You know, we've got our family games, we've got our preschool games, we've got some adult games, but these are collectible statues. Um, and so we've got to have the DC license. Nice. And so nice. essentially, they come completely naked with the peg pack and the template. So then you can build Robin, you can build Batman, you can build the Joker. Oh, so you choose which one you yes. want to build. Okay. Um, so like here we've got the Joker um, and different characters. And so say I have Robin and I really want Wonder Woman. I can go buy a Wonder Woman peg pack and build her. Okay, okay. So you can switch it out when you want a new character. Exactly, exactly. And where are these available? They are going to be available the start of September as well for 25 bucks. Um, and they're, again, they're going to be at your Walmart, your Target, your Amazon. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of the cool games you have out. A lot coming out. That's a lot of games. It is. It's a lot. We're really excited. Awesome. Anything else you want to share with our uh, people who... Oh, oh, we want to share how, how these come out. Can you do that? Um, so they come right on out. Okay. Um, and it's a little bit easier without any nails. Um, so then they go back in, and I would say this probably takes about 30 to 40 minutes to build To yourself. build it all together. Okay. Yep. Okay. And then these are different colors? Yes. Or? So there's yeah. black pegs, um, there's tan pegs, white, and so forth. And you can either make, um, like this guy is stuck at one color, but they also, um, they rotate through the different colors too. Um, and so they're a really nice desk ornament or, you know, a gift for um, superhero fans all over. And we also are going to have Wonder Woman, Superman, and Harley Quinn coming soon yes okay cool in september yes awesome so if people want to know uh, more about goliath games you said you can find them soon in walmart and stuff yeah. where, where else can they go online um if they go to our website goliathgames.com you know you can look at all our products check out the different information and whatnot you can also find us on facebook and social media at goliath games us awesome thank you so much ali anything else you want to say just thanks for stopping by Yay, so this is Callie and Allie <laughs> from Gen Con signing out. Thank you guys and see you guys next time.